Okay, folks, so a couple of weeks ago, my Samsung microwave quit working on me. Now, you don't necessarily need a Samsung. Some of this information is going to be extremely helpful for somebody who's just trying to figure out why their microwave stopped. More often than not, it's a very common problem, and it generally leads down to just simple things wear out, and most of the time they're simple. The first thing that we're going to do before we start this procedure is we are going to unplug the power. I would recommend you leave it unplugged for a couple of hours because they have transformers inside them, they have capacitors inside them, which store and collect energy. So in my situation, mine's been off for a couple days, so I'm more than safe doing this procedure. Now before you do anything, you want to make sure that you plug something else into the receptacle and make sure it functions like a light. Then we want to go to our breaker box and we want to make sure none of our breakers are tripped. This will save us from tearing apart a microwave that isn't actually defective. But if one of the breakers are tripped, there was definitely a reason for it. So make sure you think about what that reason could have been. So most of the time, my channel is about automotive repair. But in this situation, I found something at home that I thought was rather simple. I'm here to empower you and inspire you to do things yourself and stop paying people to do all of this stuff. You're not going to keep any money by spending it all the time. So nickels and dimes really add up to dollars. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. And always keep in mind, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Okay, so what we're going to need is... A Torx bit for my particular unit, a Phillips screwdriver, which you're probably going to need for just about everyone. And if you go as far as I'm going, you're going to need a, a continuity tester, which you can find on any multimeter. And we're going to definitely need a fuse under any situation. Uh, in this situation, I know that I'm going to get down to replacing some switches. So I ordered these off of Amazon. They were pretty cheap. I just looked for the proper switch for mine. I'm going to show you how to test these things out. Now, the first thing that we're going to do on just about any microwave is we're going to need to remove this cover right here. Now, on my particular microwave, there was three screws along the top and then one screw down the edge. Now, on every microwave that I've seen, and I'm not an expert, you usually move them over to the left once you get the screws out. then you should be able to remove that rather easily. The next thing you're gonna do on my particular unit right here is we had a screw holding this down right here and then up in the top of our greasy, greasy vent. If you take a light and look right down inside there, you're gonna find a screw as well. And that allows us to lift up and remove the control panel. Now on the back of the control panel, we're gonna find several plugs. You can unplug each one. I haven't found a unit where you could plug in the ones in the same spot, you know, in two different places. But just make sure you take a screenshot of this thing before you unplug it, and you'll definitely have no problems plugging it back in when you go back to do it. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove this shield up here. And this is going to be nine out of ten times your problem. But if you've ever watched my repair videos, you know that I talk a lot about not only how to fix something, but why you're fixing it. And in this situation, if you have a blown fuse, it's definitely because something actually happened. They just don't blow for no reason, people. They, they have to have a surge of electricity, maybe you had a storm outside, maybe your fan got plugged up. So you're going to want to check all of this stuff out. Maybe you just had a ton of grease on there and it arced out. So you're going to want to clean this stuff up and it is safe to clean it. You're not cleaning uh, electrical. Um, you're not cleaning a main PCU or something like that. Most of this stuff is solid state technology and it, it should be okay to, to clean it. I just took a dry paper towel and wiped off all the grease, but you could go as far as to use some soap and water possibly, but you need to let it sit for a number of days before you reassemble it. People will lead you down the right direction and this video will be certainly helpful. So first thing I'm going to do is check this fuse and we want to see if it's actually blown. Now we want to pull this fuse out and make sure that it is not bad, but we don't want to pull the, fu the circuit board away from the motor. So you could use a pair of pliers and use one finger to hold the circuit board back. 
because it's a little bit loose on here and pull the fuse out. I'm gonna do that. Now taking our continuity tester, and what a continuity tester is, is when one end of this is connected to the other end, meaning if this fuse is good, you'll get a little light, just like that. That means that the connecting circuit has went all around. So what we'll do is we'll hook this up to the end of this fuse, and then we'll test this end. Now, if this fuse was good, I would get a light, but it's obviously not. I've already replaced this fuse once, and this is the second one that comes inside the package. Now, by inserting the good fuse, we've got continuity, so we know that this fuse is good. This leads me to the why this fuse blew. Now, obviously, there's something else, and you can see the switches on here, and there's another problem. We need to remove the Torx bits that hold down our switch control. Once you've taken the Torx bits out for the door latch, make sure you raise it up and move it over to pull it out. Now, what you're gonna find is most of the time, things that go defective are going to be things that are heavily used, like buttons or the door opening and closing. It's crazy to think that the door opening and closing was the actual problem with this unit, but it could have been the fan and stuff. And in case you were wondering, I'm in my own home and I'm definitely not wearing any pants. But what we're gonna do is if we go to take that out and you'll see all of these connectors on there, just snap a little picture, just like that. Take a little screenshot, little picture of that stuff, and then you'll have it so you can put this back on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and go through and take a look at the switches and we're gonna use our continuity tester to make sure our switches are good. And the reason that I've got so many switches is because there's four switches on here, three or four, I don't remember, but well, three or four. I'm gonna replace them all because if one switch is bad, then more than likely eventually the other switches are gonna be bad as well. So just replacing them all seemed to make the most sense. I do want to point out on my unit that there was a prong like this one that needed the little pushy to be pushed down and needed to be pulled away. Without pushing that prong down, it couldn't come off. These ones like this just quite simply pull off very easily. And I had no problems pulling off all of the wiring looms from the operations board. So keep that in mind. Take a look for one of them. Also on my operations board, I had to take off a ground wire that was held on by a Phillips screw. That's quite common. You really didn't technically need to remove the control board from this, but I did because I wanted to show you guys the video. Now for the switches, they're super easy and super simple to remove. On the front sides of them, they have these little prongs down inside the square here. And if you push it, to the side, you'll be able to pull the switch out from the back. So I'm gonna do that. Now when we pull the switch out, as we push it down, we can hear it click. More than likely, this switch is actually good, but we'll test it anyways. When the door is initially closed, it will send a signal saying that the door got closed or the door got open, sending a signal either turning it on or turning it off. That switch is definitely good. Now, there's a distinct difference between our bad switch and our good switch. Actually, there's a couple distinct differences. One, this light stays on the whole time it's touching that. The top switch is defective, and we can put the two side by side one another, and this one clicks, and this one don't do ish. Then we take our new switch, which is kind of interesting because they come with normally closed or normally open double gated ones over here which is perfectly fine because most of the time when you look up in here they're only going to connect on their one way so you know that you're not going to make any mistakes but you have the proper switch and these micro switches have several different applications so in this situation this switch is always open so that is the reason that our microwave won't work so we're going to go through and replace these switches with the new switches that click 
and get rid of the one that don't click. Okay, so the thing you got to remember is there's some young child over in some foreign country assembling these things. So they need to make them rather simple for young children to assemble. So if we look here at these panels where they plug in, they do and are different sizes. So in this situation, when I go to connect this right here, this is too small to fit onto this post right here, which is where it could have possibly went. So keep that in mind that probably as young as seven-year-olds are assembling these. So if you're a 45-year-old guy like me, I'm sure you can do it too. When you go to install the door latch back in, make sure you lift it up and set it down into the grooves. Then your screw holes will line up. Okay, so we've got this all reconnected. We've got our ground back down on there. We've made sure that our clips are inserted on our door handle. We've put in our screws there. We've reinstalled a new fuse where our other one has blown. Now we're gonna go ahead and test this thing out and see if it works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. Oh, just kidding. Okay, so it turned on. Now, the last time I did this, it actually turned on. And when I went to shut the door, the fuse blew. Or maybe when I went to turn it on. What should we put in the microwave? Hmm. What won't make my wife come unhinged that I can put in the microwave and we can blow up? Okay, I'm just going to put this pizza in there. I'm not going to eat it because... Honestly, it was disgusting. Don't tell my wife. Go ahead and put that in there. And we used to have a light. Hmm. Maybe I didn't hook something up right. I know that worked. But it could have been blown by the fuse too. So, got it set to 30 seconds. Here goes nothing. <laughs> oh, just kidding. No, it's working again. <laughs> Well, luckily, this one turned out much better than this one did. <laughs> I couldn't get that one. I couldn't figure it out in my life. Well, I figured out why my light doesn't work. Well, it's because the plug for the light came unplugged, and then I eventually put it on the wrong post, causing the microwave not to be good anymore. Okay, so... My light wasn't working because that post fell off up there. Do not connect it there. That is not the right spot for it. Well, I hope you guys dug that. And since you're letting pantless people into your office, home, or restroom, wherever you're at with you, why don't you go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel, clicking them notifications, sharing them videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. Always keeping in mind that if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the very first to you. God bless, folks. Have the best of days.